Hi, welcome to Trailers from Hell. I'm Larry Karaszewski, and today's film is one of my favorites. It's from 1971, Little Murders, uh, directed by Alan Arkin, written by Jules Pfeiffer, and starring one of the most underrated actors of our time, Elliot Gould. Life is full of little problems. When this film was made, Elliot Gould was the biggest star in the world. There was actually a joke in Hollywood that you couldn't make a film unless Elliot Gould was in it. In less than two years, he stars in seven films back to back, ranging from classics like MASH and Bob, Ted, Carol and Alice, to forgotten movies like Move and Getting Straight. He even makes a picture with Ingmar Bergman, The Touch. Gould gets nominated for an Oscar, gets the cover of Time Magazine, and is so hot he decides to produce his own films. He hooks up with Jack Brodsky, and the first film their company makes is Little Murders, based on a play that Jules Pfeiffer wrote in the aftermath of the JFK and Oswald assassinations. Pfeiffer said he felt that America was having an unacknowledged nervous breakdown. The play and film are about the horrible things that humans are capable of accepting as normal. There are 345 unsolved murders in the show, but the real little murders that Pfeiffer is talking about are the murders of our everyday life, the murder of safety and our sense of security. And did I mention that this is a comedy? It's very bleak but very funny. Of course, the play flops, closes in a week, but Gould sees a movie there. He buys the rights from Pfeiffer's agent, Robbie Lance. Gould thinks Jean-Luc Godard should direct, and Godard signs on. Godard gets Robert Benton and David Newman to agree to write the script. The two writers had wanted Godard to uh, do their script, Bonnie and Clyde, a few years earlier, but this package falls apart rather quickly. Alan Arkin had directed a version of the play, so he was brought in to make his feature directorial debut. Pfeiffer does the script himself, although Arkin really encourages much improvisation on the set. The great Gordon Willis is the DP. Gould thinks this is his best performance, and he gets his MASH co-star Donald Sutherland to come in for a one-teen cameo as a priest. It might be Sutherland's funniest work, too. The film is an existential masterpiece, so it too flops big time. No one goes or pays attention. Gould and Brodsky try to make up for it with their second, more commercial film called A Glimpse of Tiger, but the plug gets pulled on that movie after four days of shooting. Gould is having some kind of breakdown, allegedly fighting with the director Tony Harvey and with actress Kim Darby. Security has to be called in. Gould becomes uninsurable and is kind of blackballed in Hollywood. He can't get work for a couple years. Everything comes crashing down. Finally, Robert Altman casts him in The Long Goodbye. In the meantime, A Glimpse of Tiger gets taken over by Gould's ex-wife, Barbara Streisand, and gets rewritten by Benton and Newman. It becomes What's Up Doc and is an enormous hit. Alan Arkin, who did such a magnificent job on this film, goes back to acting, and he directs only one more studio film, another black comedy that flops called Fire Sale. I'm sort of fond of the film, but it's no Little Murders. Pfeiffer gets nominated for a Writer's Guild Award for Little Murders. He's actually nominated twice that year. Carnal Knowledge is the other film, another masterpiece. Those films are so good and hold up so well, it's a shame that he didn't go on to a bigger screenwriting career. I guess he was happy with his day job writing comic strips. Gould continues starring in films during the 1970s, but never really gets his mojo back. He has a big disappointment later in his career when he's forced to drop out of the lead in Woody Allen's Deconstructing Harry. He would have killed in that role. Uh, it's great here, the way the trailer ends, with quotes from critics. Remember when critics' quotes were important and actually meant something. A conspiracy of such ominous proportion that we were